connecting with nature, with love and devotion, a trusting companion, built high on emotion, a good horse and rider, a patiently trained, together they're one, to let go of the reins. Let's ride some horses, but remember they need a leader to trust in, to help them succeed. Let's ride some horses that look in their eyes So saddle me up and let's go for a ride you Gotta meet my smiling dog, Pat. Smile for him, Pat. There it is. Good boy. Whoa, let's ride some horses that look in their eyes So saddle me up and let's go for a ride Welcome to our show this week, Riding Horses. I'm Kerry Coon. Today we're going to be talking about riding our horses outside, primarily uphill and downhill. And one of the things that, that we see almost everywhere we go when we're out riding some of these trails or trying to take some of our clinics outside is it's very common for these horses to get in a hurry as they go uphill and darn sure get in a hurry when they come downhill. What I like to think about is if I'm riding with a group of people and I've got somebody in front of me, somebody behind me, whether I'm going uphill or downhill, I'd like my horse to kind of downshift and, and regulate his own speed going downhill and not feel like I just kicked him in neutral and when I rolled him off that ledge, whew, he's just going to gain speed as he goes down that hill. Most horses, as they're going uphill, will speed up so they don't, in a sense so they don't have to work as hard so I'm gonna I'm gonna get this colt we got a nice little hill right here to work with it's steep enough to encourage this little green horse we're riding to want to kind of do what horses naturally do to hurry up the hill I've got a spot on this hill right behind me that it's steep enough again to bring up some speed coming downhill but yet it's a soft enough grade to give me the opportunity to work on some different exercises to get these horses to where they'll kind of regulate their speed. So I'm just going to steer this horse up this hill. I'm going to give him some slack in these reins and just head him up this hill. As he kind of started up that hill and got on that incline, he just started gaining speed as he went up. Now coming downhill, I'm going to do the same thing. Of course, he's going to want to eat, but I'm going to give him some slack, and you'll see there as he gains a lot of speed coming down that hill, which is typical. We've got people riding that don't like to ride on flat ground. They like to go find some rough terrain to ride over, and that's primarily what their horses are doing, hurrying uphill and hurrying downhill. I'm going to come at this hill at a little different angle so you can see this horse kind of more from the side as he starts up this hill. There he's gaining speed, he's gaining speed. And I'm going to try to kind of come back down here on this same angle. Again, I'm going to give him some slack in these reins. Of course, he's going to want to eat before he gains much speed. And then here comes the neutral gear. coming down that hill okay we know what it's like to be in a vehicle when we're when we're coming off of an incline and how that vehicle will want to gain speed <clears throat> these the problem with these horses doing it is they get out of balance they get out of out of control so to speak because they're just hurrying back and forth up these hills and it just makes it to me, it makes it unsafe going up and down the trail. It makes it really difficult for the people we're riding with to make sure that we're not running into them, running over them. Now I'm gonna swing around this incline here and come back down one more time.
again there as I turn him up that incline there again he's gaining speed now what most people want to do as they come off this hill they're holding on to these reins and as that horse is trying to gain speed they're just pulling on him like that to keep him from gaining speed they've got the right the right idea as far as teaching that horse how to regulate his speed or, or think about not just letting him really gain a ton of speed coming downhill but the idea of holding those reins and and kind of making that horse stay at that speed to me is kind of taking too much responsibility off my horse i want to teach this horse where i can set my hand down and he'll downshift coming down that hill on his own and i don't have to feel like i'm riding the brake i don't have to feel like i'm pulling on him the whole time he's coming off that hill this horse is going to learn as I sit back in my saddle to just get that hindquarters up underneath him and just come down that hill slowly, safely, under control. I'm not running over the four people in front of me. And it just makes everything much, much more balanced as I come off that, whole, that hill there. You know, if we've got a ditch down here or something, maybe someone in front of me has trouble their horse goes down and I need to be able to stop my horse right there halfway down that hill folks if my horse is kicking it in neutral just flowing down that hill I'm not gonna have a chance the only thing I'm gonna do is run them over so to me it's really important we get these horses where they'll really learn to regulate their speed going up and down these hills stay tuned we'll be right back and start showing you some exercises to build more control in these horses riding horses each day is a horse love stream. Our tip for this week's show is going to focus on our body position for this uphill and this down, downhill incline. When I'm riding downhill, I like to think about staying deep in my saddle. I'm going to obviously I'm rock back a little bit from my waist up. Now, depending on the incline, how much I rock back, me personally, I don't run my feet way out in front of me. Now, if I'm on an incline where that horse feels like he's pretty much just sliding off that bank, then yeah, my feet are gonna be forward then enough to keep me back here balanced over my horse's hindquarters. But I wanna keep my rear end in contact with the seat of this saddle and just sit deep in that saddle with my hands out here in front of me. When I'm going uphill, same thing. I want my hindquarters in contact with this saddle. Now I'm gonna lean forward I might even reach down and grab a handful of mane. What I don't want to do is I don't want to grab that mane and pull myself up out of my saddle like this. I'm way out of balance right here. So I'm going to have my hands out here in front of me. If I want to grab that mane right there, I can. My feet might come back underneath me just a little bit. But primarily, they're going to stay in line with my shoulders and my hips as I rock out over the front end of that horse. And again, how much I rock forward is going to be dictated by the incline of that hill. Welcome back, folks. We're gonna go ahead and start talking about our downhill approach to these hills. Our first segment, we were just kind of discussing the idea of these horses wanting to hurry up the hill, wanting to hurry down the hill, what it looks like when I just ride up to that hill, set my hand down, give my horse some float in the reins. I I'm, think of it as if I've got some float in the reins, then to me, I've basically taken my foot off the brake my horse has the freedom to speed up if he wants to. And when we come off that hill a time or two, well, this horse was sure gaining speed coming down. Same thing going up the hill. I took my foot off the brake and gave him the freedom to go. And obviously he went pretty fast going up this incline right over here. It's just a little bit steeper than where we're at right here. But now as we, as we start to talk about specifically what are we going to do to encourage these horses to slow down as they're going down these inclines without us having to ride the brake. The first thing I, I need is I need to find me an incline that's quite a bit softer than what I had right over here because I'm going to be picking up on this horse and I'm going to be literally where he starts to speed up wherever I'm at on this incline I'm just going to pick up one rein and I'm going to go right back to the top and I'm going to start this process again. So I've got to make sure that, that I'm on an incline that's soft enough, 
that as I bend him around there in a circle, he doesn't lose his balance and go tumbling to the bottom. But yet I want it to have enough drop to it that it does encourage this horse to gain some speed. Otherwise, I'm not really gonna have the opportunity to work on that. My other option is to pick up on that horse straight and stop him and back him up a little bit. But again, I need a softer incline for that. So we'll roll this horse up here to the top just a little bit. We'll bend him back up here to the top, bend him around, and I'm gonna come right back down here. Now again, I've got enough incline that my horse is encouraged to gain some speed, but you can see as I pick up on him right there, it's not so steep that he's just gonna fall on his head. I'll go ahead and bend him around right here. I've got the freedom there when I picked up on that horse and he started to make that turn. He's still got momentum carrying him down this hill. So I've got to pick up on him soft enough to give him time to make that turn. I don't want to just rip his nose away from him and expect him to come back up that hill and not roll to the bottom. But the idea is this, as I start down this hill, if you as the horse will regulate your speed going downhill, I'm gonna leave you alone. See, I'm gonna leave these reins with some float in them and not be pulling on them or riding the brakes, so to speak, as I'm coming down. So this time, as I come downhill, it's like he's almost exaggerating how slow he wants to come down. And then I might just stop him right here and let him rest. <clears throat> See, that time as he came down that hill, I can feel him using them hindquarters as he kind of brings him up underneath himself to, to slow that momentum going down that hill. And I got lots of float in my reins. So he gets down here, I'll just pick up on him, stop him, reward him here a little bit. All I'm really gonna try to do is make this more work. If he wants to hurry down that hill, you picture I ride off that hill 45 times and all 45 times he starts trotting halfway down that hill and I pick him up and go right back to the top and do it again. Pretty soon the light bulb is gonna come on. What happens when he starts to gain speed, he's gotta go right back to the top and start it over. Let's try that again. Now I'm gonna come around this hill and I'm gonna come off over here where it's a little bit steeper. Come off right on this edge right here. And I'm gonna to try to do the same thing. Now even though this ground right here is a little bit steeper. I can still pick up with just one rein if I need to, but you watch that horse right there as he came down that hill. I've got my hands out here in front of my saddle. I had some float in those reins and you saw how that horse just slowly used his hindquarters to gauge that speed coming off that hill. Now this spot right here, this incline right here might work pretty good if I wanted to pick this horse up and stop him and back him up a step or two if he's in a hurry. But here's what I've noticed. On these young horses, as we're trying to get them trained and we're trying to teach them how to balance coming off these hills and how to slow their speed, to stop one halfway down one of these hills and back him back to the top, I better have a lot of things built in that horse before I do that. To me, my best option is to find me a softer incline like this. Use my one rein to just bring that horse around, get back to the top. And I'm just gonna use repetition to help this horse find a way to not be so free flowing with his feet as he comes off that hill. Won't take much practice if you'll be consistent with it. And you can get these horses where you can ride them off about as steep as hill as you can find. And them horses will just tuck them hindquarters up underneath themselves and just slowly gauge their way down. Stay tuned, we'll be right back to talk about going up and see. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. Welcome back to the show, folks. We're talking about riding uphill, we're talking about riding downhill. It can be a lot of fun, we all know that. My idea of an of a incline is a whole lot steeper than this. But when I'm talking about trying to build some control in my horse, 
during the uphill and the downhill, then I need some terrain that I can work on. We showed in our first segment going up this incline right here beside us, how this horse would really hurry going up. It's steep enough that it would really kind of encourage him to try to hurry up so he didn't have to work as hard to get up there. And then same thing coming downhill. There's darn sure enough slope there that this horse would sure gain speed as he was coming off that, that slope. In our second segment, we were talking about specifically the downhill technique to start building some speed control in this horse coming off that incline. When I'm riding my colts downhills, I don't want to feel like I have to hold the slack out of these reins and hold these horses from speeding up. Now, if I take the slack out of my reins and I gather that colt up, I want to feel that horse just gather up underneath, underneath my, my seat and be right there in my hands, but not leaning on, on my reins like he's still trying to gain speed. So I'll find these inclines like we've been using here that are a little bit softer where I have the freedom to turn my horse to regulate that speed going uphill and downhill. Now I'm gonna use the same technique going up this incline that I used coming down. As I start up, if there's a spot in here where my horse speeds up, then wherever that spot is, I'm gonna pick up on him right there and just bend him around and I'm gonna come right back down. Then I'll turn him and we'll go right back up. So what I'm gonna to try to say to my horse is, if you want me to leave these reins alone, then you need to learn to regulate your speed going up this hill. Okay, he was just about to the top and sped up right there. So again, I'm gonna pick him up, come right back down. He's doing really good on the downhill now, bringing that hindquarters up underneath himself, gauging that speed. So we just keep going back and forth right here. Now I'm gonna pick a little steeper spot and I'm gonna head straight up right here. And again, he speeds up. So I'm just gonna pick him up, bring him around. Even though I'm on that incline, I'm not gonna wait till I get to the top. See, what I'm gonna to say to him is, as soon as I feel you speed up, I'm gonna bend you around and we're gonna go right back and start that over. That's why I find an incline that's got enough angle to it to encourage my horse to speed up, but it's not so steep that I can't work on it by doing just that, by picking that horse up wherever he's at on that incline and bringing him either right back down or, or to go right back up. Now, when my horses start to feel like they're, they're slowing down going up that hill and they're, they're starting to get the idea of how to engage the hindquarters a little bit, I'll move over here now where it's a little bit steeper. And what I'm gonna do with my reins now, now that I'm moving over to this steeper incline, is I'm gonna take the slack out of them, but I'm not gonna be using them to ride the brake, so to speak. I'm just gonna try to help this horse find the body position that I want. Okay, I'd like to see this horse maybe in that position as he's going up. I don't necessarily want his head way up and his nose stuck way out. So I'm just gonna get a hold of my reins a little bit shorter and as I head up this hill, I'm not just pulling on him to slow him down. But I want to try to say to him, if you'll find this position, you can engage your hindquarters just like that as you come up that hill. And you don't have to be hurrying up that hill. So right there, we caught it coming downhill. So we'll go right back and work on our uphill again. So you see him coming up this steeper angle here now at a walk. We'll come right back down. That was a really, really good one going up and that was a really good one coming down. So I'm just gonna stop him right here and just let him think about that for a second. See, here's my idea, guys. I've sat on a lot of horses that wanna just run up these hills but my idea is to not hurry up that hill. My idea is to pick my path. And some of the places we ride, the terrain's rough enough that I've got to make sure I've got control and I can turn that horse and stop that horse anywhere on that incline I need to. So I need to make sure that as he's going up, 
He's not just in a hurry to get to the top. He's not gaining speed because he feels good and starts bucking halfway up. He's literally just driving with them hind feet. And if you've ever walked a horse up a hill this steep and asked him to just walk up it, then you know what I'm talking about. When it feels like that horse has truly engaged them hindquarters and he's just driving himself up that hill in low gear. Guys, it's an awesome feeling. And as you get almost to the top, your horse isn't in a hurry, he's still soft in your hand. That's when you really get you really get brave and you start thinking, man, I think I could find some rougher terrain to go have some fun on. So as we're, we're thinking about the uphills, we're thinking about the downhills, the, the idea, guys, is to just make sure these horses understand that it's not our responsibility to ride the brake going down or ride the brake going up. It's their responsibility to come back to us and learn how to regulate their own speed. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. I hope you guys enjoyed our show today talking about going uphill, going downhill, some things that we can work on to get our horse a little safer, a little more under control. You know, the, my whole goal is to come out with these young horses or even older horses that we're trying to help people with and to teach them how to maintain some speed or regulate their speed coming off these inclines or even going up these inclines without us feeling like we have to ride the brake. You know, we showed what it looked like when these horses just want to hurry uphill and downhill. Then we came back and we were working on how we would approach getting this horse to self-regulate his speed coming down those hills and then the same thing going up the hill. And I think if you'll take this home and work on it, it doesn't take much consistency. These horses will get to where you feel like you don't need your reins at all going up and down these hills. And it builds confidence. It builds the fun in the whole ride to be able to have the freedom to come out and go slow up and down these hills and know that your horse isn't getting out of control. For next week's show, we're gonna bring in some buffalo and we're gonna use those to develop some focus in the rider, focus in the horses. If we can learn to send our energy where we want to go and get, get our whole body, not just our eyes, but our whole body focused on where we want that horse to go, then to me, we're sending a lot clearer picture to our horse where he's supposed to go. So I hope to see y'all next week. In the meantime, let's go ride some horses. some horses but remember they need a leader to trust them to help them succeed oh let's ride some horses that look in their eyes so saddle me up and let's go for a ride say goodbye to the folks patch good boy <laughs>